dental and education development, technical and vocational training, literacy enhancement, education is on the move. On Education Spotlight, we look at developments within the education sector and how Guyanese can take advantage of the opportunities available. Hello and welcome to Education Spotlight. This week we'll be talking about the Ministry's efforts to address the antisocial behaviour among our students. With me in studio is Chief Education Officer Dr. Marcel Hudson and Chief School Welfare Officer Ms. Jillian Bighouse. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, Dr. Hudson, I know uh, over the last few weeks we have seen some very antisocial behavior among our pupils in several secondary schools. Can we talk a little bit about that? Thank you, Anara. Yes, um, it's no secret that we've seen it on social media, Facebook, newspapers. Um, our children have not been behaving um, in the best way possible, some of them. And therefore, as a ministry, we have decided that we will have zero tolerance for such kind of um, kinds of behavior. And we have developed an action plan in order to counter those um, deviant behaviors, as we would call them in, in schools. Um, what we have noticed is that the behaviors forthcoming may have been prevalent in certain areas, certain schools, it is not widespread as um, some courses might make it out to be. But I think what is very what is what is very important too is the fact that if we do not attempt to stem the the tide of that kind of behavior um, or those kinds of behaviors, we could find other students copying and doing similar things in order to get recognition, in order to, to, to be seen and to be noticed. And so we have developed, like I said before, a plan of action to counter or to remove, if not altogether, alleviate the kinds of bad behaviors we have been seeing in the school system uh, in some areas, in some communities. If I could go ahead and maybe say what we have done, um, the plan of action, we focused particularly on, on gangs in schools. Um, of course, as you identified, antisocial behavior. Um, gangs and persons who might have a proclivity for taking drugs or using drugs in schools. So the plan of action it is kind of um, all-encompassing because we recognize that in order for us to really take a grip of what is happening, we need to have a holistic approach. So. This approach includes the teachers, it includes uh, parents, education officers, and of course, government agencies like the social protection, welfare, and the police. And so we feel that if we adopt that kind of holistic approach, we could really zero in uh, and make the change that we, so, we are so desirous of seeing. So before we go into further into any into going into what are our plans, can you do you think that the behavior that we're seeing in our students is something that's always been there, or has it stemmed because these pupils have been um, out of school for the last two years or so? Well, I can't say directly if there is a correlation. I think the research um, the research would have to be done um, if we're going to determine whether there is a correlation. We had spoken with UNICEF to do such a research to see if there is a correlation between um, the behavioral practices that we've seen and uh, and the, the students being away from, from school and maybe having access to lots of materials um, on the internet and what have you. But I can't say with any degree of, 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 of definity that there is a correlation. But Persons are suggesting that that might be, and they very well be so. But as a researcher, I, I like to make sure that I have the data before I make certain statements. Yeah. Now, see, so let's dive straight into our efforts to, um, you know, curb this behavior among our pupils. I know over the last few days, last few weeks, we've um, seen some police presence in our schools as well as members of the Ghana Defense Force speaking to our students. Yes, um, because some of the, the behavioral practices that we've been seeing, some of them would warrant police intervention. 
if I could say that. You see, we're dealing with children and we have to be very, we have to be very careful and mindful of how we speak about minors. And so if you are have if you have in your possession weapons that could endanger other persons, obviously you would want to make sure that whoever is dealing with that matter, they, they are capable and they have the capacity to deal with that matter. If you have issues of of persons uh, having in their possession drugs, illicit drugs, and Molly is, is, is an illicit drug. Um, and if you have that, you have to have the people with the authority to deal with those things. But I, I'm still maintaining that what I've seen is that these children, they're good children, and they might have been misguided or misdirected and if you really have a conversation with some of them you'll recognize that what they need is structure in their lives and they need validation and sometimes those things are not forthcoming from the various corners that they should come from and so the police became involved because of of, of the nature of some of the issues that a teacher will not go and confront or or, or even you wouldn't go and confront because you may not have the capacity for what might be forthcoming. And so that's why the police were involved. It is not the desire of the ministry to have policemen um, in schools and so forth, but they have to be there based upon what has been happening. Blood has been shed. We've seen, you know, people got caught, people got damaged and so on. And so those are matters where we have to have a strong presence of law enforcement. So, yeah. And tell us what are you from the welfare and what is the plan? And from the welfare, as you said, we are dealing with this matter holistically and we are collaborating with the HFL unit and all other officers within the ministry to have the situation or we do things like uh, moral talks with our students and as we have our police presence, the police are not there to know, like scare our children, but to encourage them because recently we had police present in our school, not to only see if they have weapons, but to encourage them mm -hmm. and to have moral talks with them. And children were, you know, attentive, listening to the police. And I know that it will make a change in their lives because sometimes we have to use the example because we're not training certain areas to be with drugs. So that's why we have the police involved because you know, persons might think negative about it. But at the Ministry of Education too, we have a policy for safe and secure schools. So we need to look into the safety of our children because if we're looking television and we see what is happening internationally, we wouldn't like something like that to happen in our school system in the end. So that's why we have our police presence. And Ari, if I could just jump back in here to um just to piggyback on what Miss Michael said. Um I've had a meeting with the boys in particular from Campbell Secondary School. And uh, it is amazing. These boys, they're smart, they're intelligent. And so um, they were asked to take out a piece of pen, a piece of paper and, 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 and pen and to say what is it, what it is that they would like to become and to say to me how you plan to get there. And those guys, they were spot on. The same school where people might be saying, you know, whatever. Pilots, someone to be pilots, they talk about being a soldier, even being a policeman. They talk about an engineer. One was so bold enough to say, well, you know, if I'm going to be a mechanical engineer, there are certain subjects that I have to have, like physics. And so clearly, and mathematics, clearly, they know. And they, they, they were all excited. Some of them held a microphone for the very first time in their lives, you know, to speak and, and to, to... So these are things that we're trying to do to, to raise the self-esteem in our children, give them an opportunity to, 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 
to develop, to grow. And I think um, it was amazing how they stood up and they were asked to introduce themselves. Say who you are, who's your teacher and so on. I remember one man said to me, let us say his name is Marcel. He got up and he said, when I asked a question, you know, what is your name? He said, Marcel. And I said, Marcel is not your name. And then I said, what is your name? Then he said, my name is Marcel Watson. Then he put it into context. So, so you know, it, it, it's guidance and uh, we need to really let them know that they're valuable and that they could make a contribution to the growth and the development of this country and not go down a path where, where um, you know, life could become hard for them. And I like what Ms. Vipo said, the police, we saw policemen and men from the army sat and had these boys in a huddle and they were telling them about their lives and, and you know, how they became whatever, um, how they reached to, their, to, to whatever rank they had and stuff, which was nice. So it is not always about the police being there, though. it's just to bring um, order to the whole situation. So, you know, I, I heard you mention a lot about boys, but I, I would have seen some reports that girls are also involved in some of the antisocial behavior that we're seeing well, as well. Well, if you look at the, uh, if you look at some, I dealt specifically with the boys because there was an issue there with boys and I heard that they were guns when we reported. And so I pulled the boys together, but the program that we were engaging in, it is, like Ms. Vifo said, it is holistic. If you look at what happened at Lodge, where the person in the military um, rank or the military guard um, clothing, the officer that was there, he spoke to girls and boys together. So my situation was the boys because I chose to talk to the boys because I sensed what was happening with gangs and I wanted to talk to them about them because they have a proclivity to get engaged in, in gang related um, behaviors, boys generally. And, and all of these things are linked to us. So we have to understand in, in the, the, the stages of growth and development of the individual, as you move from childhood into the different stages, as you move into adolescence, that is the period when you search, you're trying to find yourself. And so this identity is a big thing and loyalty and who you have associated with. And that's how people form these little groups and so on. So we have to understand all of those dynamics that are playing out before we cast or pass any judgment. But when it is taken too far, where persons are injured or persons will be injured, we have to arrest it. I'm glad you had mentioned guidance just now, CEO. I know the ministry is doing its part and we're involving the Gang Defense Force and Police Force. But don't you, would you, would you say that it goes beyond outside of our, our school gates, that it goes into the communities as well, to guide these students to ensure that they're on the right path? Yeah, maybe. Yes, maybe. Yes, um, because we are doing our utmost this at the school's level. And when we would have done our part, if we're expecting that we have continuity, you know, persons on the outside, the community, they go back to the parents. So that's why we even are tackling the parents. We, we plan to have parental seminars because if we're teaching something in the school and then the child goes back into the home environment and the parent doesn't know anything about that, we're not getting any place. So we need the outside community at large, the family, the church, and the wider spread to be involved. And you know what, and I like, you know, this course before we actually started, you mentioned something that it takes a village to raise a child as an African proverb, I think, or say. I think there was a time, and I think we have to return to those days. Uh, there was a time when, when persons looked out for one another. Um, if an arrow was found somewhere that she should not be as a child, and they were community members, and not even community members, members of the society generally would say, what are you doing there? That is not a place where you should be, go home. And we have to start doing that again. I mean, not because a child may not be your child. Um, you will just remain quiet and watch, watch whatever misery is unfolding. But I think we need to start speaking. The taxi driver, the minibus driver, the person who's selling on the corner, wherever, you see children misbehaving, you have a right as an adult 
to say you should not behave like that. And I think we need to um, we need to move in that direction. And if we know parents, we should not keep certain behavioral practices um, to ourselves. But call up the parents and say, "Look, I noticed your child. People I, people used to do that." As a young man growing up, I know persons would say, you know, would have seen me said, school is out, you should be at home. But I don't know these persons, the firemen, the policemen. Generally, people in society, they saw you going in a direction that you should not go, they arrested you. And I think that we need to go back to that kind of, um, that kind of thinking. It can't be I'm minding my own business in matters of, of, of that nature. Yeah, well, see, if I, if I can say is that while some persons might be inclined to say, you know, you're not supposed to be here at home, there are also other parents who would take offense to the fact that someone is trying to correct their child's wrong behavior. You know, sometimes we have our children and we cannot be with them as a same 24-7. I'm a parent and I'm very happy when persons will complain to me about my child. I mean to say sometimes persons may lie, but if someone gives me a complaint about my child, I start investigating yeah. for myself to find out. I never, you know, at any time, you know, in a disagreement with what persons would have said because we cannot be in every place with our children. And I like the point that CEO mentioned that as an adult, <laughs> we should take the responsibility to reprimand children wherever we see they are doing wrong things. And it's up to persons who don't want to, you know, accept that their children are doing wrong. Because if we as adults stand, um, stand by the wayside and see children do things in our presence and we don't reprimand them, we are beheading. And that is why children are doing that because now these adults passing children course and whatever they don't have respect because we as adults we are not reprimanding them so i think we should go back to that stage where the course the parents like it or not you know one of the top one of the top sociologists in this country i think he lives abroad now i had the experience of sitting in his class professor ken dance said a thing that you know that will always remain with, with us the sociologists he said you do not get what you expect you get what you inspect and uh, i have seen in my time some parents would have been embarrassed because they felt that this is not my child my child would never be involved in that and so we had uh, so when we conduct searches by the welfare department we found uh, all kinds of things in, in bags as we see now and when parents were called to the school parents were shocked some even fainted because they could not believe that this is what um you know the, the children are taking to school every now and again i mean my son every now and again i'm going into that bag to see what is inside here i trust him yes but you get what you inspect. You know, we expect a lot of things from people, but when you inspect, you you could be you could be appalled. Mm -hmm. yeah. but the other issue is with parents too, is that they would not reprimand their child for bad behavior. They more than likely if you said, say take for example, you see someone's child on the road doing something that you're not supposed to do. You go to the parent and tell the parent this is what their child is doing in front of the um, in front of the child, and the parent in turn starts yelling at you for for trying to correct their child behavior, their child's behavior. Yes, I recognize a lot of times parents are being defensive, and recently I had to you know talk to a parent. I said to this is from doing such because not hard to see. Rice a plate and write a, rice a hat. Two different things because you know, we have our children, they are so innocent in front of our eyes, but when they are with their peers at school, it's a different thing. So sometimes we need to listen and you know, as CEO say, inspect and start doing our own investigation as parents. And when I talk to children, I would say, I'm not talking to you from a welfare standpoint, I'm talking to you because I'm a parent also, mm -hmm. and I understand some of the challenges also that parents are facing. 
Okay, I want to circle back to what CEO said just now when we did a search of some students' uh, bags the other day and we found a, a series of weapons. Can you talk a little bit about that? What were some of the things that we found on um, students? Knives, scissors, some of them found more the scissors still what they call chokers. They use these, these same steels and they shape it and they call them chokers. A lot, a lot of the um, items were scissors. I know a lot of the antisocial behavior we've seen, it has been among secondary school students. Now, some of the subjects that are offered in secondary school require things like scissors, geometry sets, cutlasses. How are we treating with that, knowing that these students have to have access to this during school hours? No, there are specifications as it relates to scissors. We yeah, have children doing um, art and craft, and they use the scissors, but they have to carry this, this, the wrong point scissors. We are not accepting those with the sharp points, right? The wrong ones. As it relates to agriculture and so on, agricultural tools are stored in a storeroom, and only when it's that period, teachers will take them out and the student use them and put them back. So if we find a child with a cut last or a solid school, it means that probably that child had an intention. Some of them would say they walk with it to defend themselves or for their own safety. So we have zero, zero tolerance as it relates to those things. Okay. Now, I, I know see you would have mentioned that the ministry has an action plan to uh, go forward in terms of dealing with this. Yes, the plan of action, like I said, it's holistic in nature. It takes into consideration um, what we will do with our teachers because definitely, you know, teachers, um, they might need some kind of training in terms of how they deal with some of these matters. It takes into consideration the education officers, um, like the document that we have, the protocol for safe schools, how we administer um, that document. It also takes into consideration parents, like you heard Ms. Michael said, there is a need for um, parental seminars because some parents are very young and they may not know what constitutes um, uh, proper child rearing and so they, they could access some training through, through seminars also. It takes into consideration um, the general populace forces from the society, like fathers in particular, how we could have fathers serving as role models and bringing um, some semblance of order through patrolling the school. Maybe they would have one, you know, particular jersey or something, say fathers love children, you know, things like that and, and talking with children as well. I know the Honorable Minister is very keen on having pastors who will, or with people from the religious community who will take sessions at, 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 at the assembly. Uh, members of the PTA will be involved. And uh, of course, uh, where necessary, the discipline, discipline um, forces. And so it takes into consideration um, a holistic approach, like, like I said, that action plan. Um, we have started to execute it. It is something that is going to be ongoing until we see some semblance of order um, in our school system. And I want to say very clearly here, sometimes the couple of people that run amok gives um, the, the school a bad name. And so people believe that it is the entire school that is behaving in that way, and that is not so. You have a couple of children who might, like I said, misinformed, misguided and an entire school is painted because of their behavior. And so, and then also to say that th these are cases that are in some isolated, in, in, in some areas. This is not a massive, but like the police said, massive lawlessness, but like the police said, we have this thing and they would know better as men who study um, their business that you have this copycat thing. And so sometimes if you don't nip something early, you find it started to spread all over. People copying and want to become notorious and to make Facebook and that you see yourself. And, and, and so you feel good about yourself and, and copying. So 
Um, so we, we, we want to deal with this thing frontally and not allow it to spread in any form or fashion. Thank you so much, Patsy. Thank you both for your time today. This has been Education Spotlight. Thanks for watching. Join us again next week.